Hi, I'm Robert Reeves, CTO of Liquibase. Over the past 20 years, we have seen amazing advancements in how we develop and deliver software. However, our development workflow has left the database behind. Simply put, Liquibase data is version control and collaboration for your database. Today, I will show you how to quickly provision a developer instance of Microsoft SQL Server, make changes to SQL Server, and then commit the change. I will then show you how to roll backwards and forwards your changes. So let's get started. So Liquibase data leverages Docker Desktop uh, to version databases. And so we're starting out here in uh, where else? We're working with Microsoft SQL Server. We are in VS Code here. And so what Liquibase data needs is a Docker container. Now, the official SQL Server container doesn't have volumes um, exposed. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and add that. I've also exposed um, the uh, two ports, 1433. Uh, well, one port, 1433. And so, um, yeah, I think we'll go ahead and build this Docker file. Um, so to do that, and I'm, I'm looking off to my left here for my notes. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and go to our command prompt, and we are going to build this container. Now, I've already built this previously, so it's real peppy. But even if you're doing it for the first time, it doesn't take that long. Um, and so now it's built. Um, we can do uh, Docker images, MSQL, because that's what I called it. And there it is. Um, you can see I've been working on this for a while. Um, so let's go ahead and get started wiring this up with Liquibase data. Now the next step here is that we have to have our Liquibase.properties file set up. And it is going to mirror um, how we're going to set up our container as well. So for Liquibase veterans, no surprises here. Um, but the one thing that you might notice here that's new is this repository. This is a convenience function. This just helps me avoid topi typing my repo over and over again. You can name it whatever you want. Um, so now that we have this set up, I'm just going to go ahead and start this container with Liquibase data. Now, it's real similar to Docker Run. So let's go ahead and look at this command here. Liquibase data run my repo. This is the first and only time I'm going to type this. Um, and these environment variables, these are required by this Docker container. I'm going to pass them in. Uh, and um, yeah, the image name is MSSQL. And so we go ahead and hit enter. Now this is going to do two things. One, this is going to start the container, but two, it's also going to register that volume with Liquibase data. And that is the thing that's being versioned. Liquibase data isn't versioning the entire container. That would be dumb. Uh, we are only versioning um, the volume, uh, which is where the data is stored for the database. Uh, you'll see how that comes into play in a second. Uh, but now that we have this up and running, um, I can do Liquibase data ls. Uh, and it'll show me the repositories that are registered with Liquibase data on my machine. Uh, we should see only one here. Yay, there's my repo. Now, database is up and running, so we should be able to connect to it, right? So I'm going to go over to dBeaver and connect to this. Now, you can use any, any GUI tool you want, or, or not use one, or command line. Um, and uh, and connect to SQL Server here. So we'll go ahead and connect. And let's take a peek at this. Now, look gang, I I'm connecting to this with SA. You probably might want to do something different, but just for convenience, this is what I'm using. Um, and so uh, you could set up your own database and those sorts of things. I will leave that as an exercise to you to set up. But here we're just using SA, and if you'll notice, we've got, you know, uh, uh, our tables here that come with SQL Server. Um, okay, cool. So now this is up and running. I should probably do a commit here. I'm going to do my first commit, a baseline commit. Uh, so here we go, liquid base data commit. There's the message. 
And what this is doing is looking at that volume, saving a copy of it, and um, uh, so that you can later share this with a remote and other team members. Uh, persist this to a remote and share with team members. And so let's go ahead and go and see what that is, that uh, log message, or that commit log looks like. So liquid base data log. And there we go, we have one commit, awesome. Now, of course, we should probably make some changes to this database. And, and you know, look, <laughs> I know a pretty good tool that's handy for that, Liquibase. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to generate a change log. Change log is an artifact that consists of change sets to tell the database in order what changes need to happen. Um, and so in this case, it's going to reverse engineer the schema of the database and pull in all existing objects. Now, because SQL Server has some other things there in the, uh, that, that master database, we're going to see some things in our change log. Um, and I'll go over back to VS Code and we'll take a peek at it. And there they are. Remember these from DBeaver? We saw this stuff earlier. Now. I don't need these in my change log. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these because later I might want to persist these changes to a database that doesn't have those tables. I, I don't need to create those for my application. Um, and I'm going to create a single change set here, real simple, We're just creating a table. And there we go. Now, look, I'm using XML, but Liquibase supports JSON, YAML, uh, formatted SQL. So whatever you like for your structured documents, that's fine. Um, I just prefer XML. That's okay. Um, so here we're going to create a table. Uh, looks like four columns, and we're going to put a primary key on one of them. Neat. So now that I have this change log created, I can go back here and just run Liquibase update. Now, I absolutely love this SQL Server container. This is fast, real fast. Um, and uh, you'll see that when I start doing the rollbacks, uh, roll, roll backwards and forwards, how quick it is. Big fan of that. Um, so now let's go back to dBeaver and we're going to hit refresh. And we're gonna see some new tables here. One is the table I created customer. All right, that's cool. Um, you know, I've got my columns there. Neat. All right, awesome. I also have two meta tables. This is what Liquibase creates in your database to make uh, to keep track of changes. Um, so if we go into this database change log table and we go look at the data, uh, we will see um, this one row here. This this update that I did. Great. Well, now that I've made this change to the database, this might be a good time to do another commit. Uh, so we're gonna do liquibase data commit and a message, just like we did before. Create a new table. And if we do liquibase data log, we're now going to see two commits there. Now this is the fun part. Um, you know what? I don't know how I feel about this table. Uh, I think I might've made a mistake. So I'm going to roll back. I'm going to go back to the first version. Good thing I created a baseline commit, right? And um, what I need to do is just do liquid base data checkout and I need to tell it the commit ID. And so we're gonna go back over here. And the commit ID is on this first commit. Now remember, we are checking out the first commit, which had, uh, you know, was, was right after I started the database. So that means it will not have the customer table and it will not have those two liquid base meta tables. And so we'll go back to dBeaver and we will do a refresh.
and they are gone. You know what? I, I, I have regrets. I have regrets now. Um, I actually did like that table. Um, so we can do that again. We can now roll forward. Uh, so we can do liquid base data log. And then I'm going to do my checkout uh, with the other commit ID where I created the new table. And so now when I go back to dBeaver, I'm going to see all of those tables. Now, of course, we're just versioning empty tables here, but if this was store procedures, if this actually had data in it, um, if this had any other changes to your database, uh, that would be persisted and versioned as well. And that is really, really cool. Thank you.